Martin. <laughs> well, Hello, Ron. He's been online shop. <laughs> show us and, around then. And the new uh, outlet store. Well, this is it. Come on in, I'll show you around. It's full of model boaters, obviously. All crowding in here. Mm. And the first thing we've got on the inside as you come in is the uh, stand for new models and new releases. Uh, and reception area, I suppose you call it. Mm. Which is all some of the latest models and some of the older ones. Show us around the steam launch. Right, the steam launch. This is a new steam engine kit from Dean's Rain, uh, which consists of uh, a twin cylinder uh, oscillating engine, pre built boiler, gas tank, and a condenser. Comes as a separate kit. There's a whole range of different engines, all modular, they all bolt together with each other. Uh, so it's basically, it's steam that's suitable for radio control, and it's radio controllable and radio controllable, and it's designed to go into one of our holes. Which hole is this one? This one's the Helen hole, which we use for testing, which is nice, Victorian steam launch. And if you put the top on it, it looks like the one over there on the middle of the new, new releases show. That one's actually got an electric motor in it, and it's one of the new kits, fiberglass hull, and all the superstructures lay laser cut. We've got laser cut planks, laser cut plastic, laser cut parts. So you can do that as a steam or electric model. Very nice Victorian hull. One on the back is the latest release, which was released today, which is the uh, 1890s torpedo boat destroyer. And it's not a model of a specific ship, it's a model of a type, because there was no other like. What era? This one's 1901, this particular one. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a proper type, it's a torpedo boat catcher, it's not a destroyer. They had sort of destroyers in those days. And the idea was to catch a torpedo boat, you put guns on it and go and catch it. And then they sort of worked out that as they were both at the same speed, you can't catch anything. <laughs> But the concept is single screw, lots of power, nice and long and thin, so very fast and manoeuvrable. Two channel? This one is happily on two channel gear, yeah. yeah one fiber motor. And fiberglass hole, fiberglass superstructure. And all the decking is laser cut as per the planking. We're not actually sure if the deck on the real ones were planked. So a bit of model's license. We planked it because it looks nice. <laughs> How hard is she to build? Very simple. We had somebody a week ago brought it on Friday and come back on Sunday to sail it. <laughs> so that is called the Torpedo Boat Destroyer, TBD 39. Right. Stepping back, uh, we have a display of some of the ready to go models over there. The RNLI lifeboat, the top one, the RTTL, which is from Hendon. Ah, that is based on the actual Hendon one. That is it? the boat that is in Hendon Museum. Yeah. The one on the East and R and L life boat, Waveney, and the one on the bottom is what the model of the ship looked like originally, because it was an American design lifeboat. So we do a, a ready to run kit for both of them. It makes a nice pair. This tell me section. about your etchings. Yeah, tell me about the etchings, right. <laughs> this section's all just display boards of all the parts, some of the parts we make, right, uh, so that people can actually come along and look at a part and see as opposed to looking in a picture or a catalogue or a brochure. You can actually see the thing itself. Uh, uh, there's all some of the different types of prop shafts we make. This is growing all the time. Brass etchings, these are all sets of brass etchings from kits or individual parts that are available as separate items. So we've got popular things, railings, stanchions, gun sights, companion ways, ladders, again, same type of thing, useful for all sorts of boats. Uh, part of our range of electric motors, uh -huh. uh, all the different types and all the spec. Obviously it's still growing because we've just added another eight motors to the range, so we need another board. Uh, above that, rudders, uh, selection of all the different types of rudders we make which again ready assembled, brass ones, metal ones, nylon ones, plastic ones. Okay. Naturally following on to that we've got a small range of all the nylon propellers we make and the couplings we've also got. Yeah, I like your couplings. Uh, yeah. And they're our own products we make them ourselves apart from the Reboche ones which are a Reboche product. 
Propeller wise, we also have the Roboche range of brass propellers, but that's 1,800 of them. Right. And uh, just a full selection, just to show you some of the types is on the display board down there. On average, there's 40 sizes of each type. And then there's all the specialist prop shafts and such like. Rest of it, again, more rudders for bigger boats, a small range of the, some of the servos we do. Um, Going round the walls, you've got samples of all the bigger uh, kits of parts like ladders and gratings. Are these arrivable separately? Aren't they? These are all available separately. The ladders and those things go down to very tiny sizes. These are just a selection to show you how they, what they look like and how they're made. Far corners with this, this section over this side of the shop is on uh, modelling materials. So you've got all your brass tubing, brass rods, aluminium tubing, aluminium rods, microfine tubing. You've got all the plaster modelling materials. Then you've got all the robust materials, which is all structural engineering, which is all styrene. And the handy thing about all this stuff is when we get it out, it's all in one metre lengths. Ah, useful. Very useful to boats. Difficult is you need to buy a few of them to make it practical to post. Uh, You've got the shorter lengths, which is the same stuff again, but with the variations of you've got all the coloured and clear plastic tubes, clear plastic and coloured square sections, right, half rounds, very popular for gutters on railway models. Good to see the station actually full for a change. <laughs> again, huge range of stuff. Right. This section is the RB fittings range, which are these. These are just samples. Right. Too big to display them all because there's well over a thousand different items. Right. So there's a display board there. Then we have a catalogue of all the parts, which lists all the sizes and specification. And then there's all the stuff itself in the drawers. So if you want to see something, we can pull a drawer out, pick a number, pull it out. You can have a look at it, handle it, play with it. Yeah. And again, a vast range of fittings. Right. Next section, uh, model figures, 24 scale, 35th and 76th. To show you what they look like when they're painted up. The corner section over there is modelling materials, which is slowly growing. We'll be having more glues and paints, but that's all the basic modelling glues and adhesives you need and most of the specialist tools, rivet makers, scoring knives, keyhole saws, circle cutters. So we've gone for the more unusual tools that aren't freely available. Uh, section at the top, radio control models, which we do. A lot of these are to go in the landing crafts we make, but other stuff is in the 24 scale range, which we like anyway. So we've got those there. Another section here, these are all the uh, finishing materials, so you've got micro polishing cloth, these are one of the great inventions of the world, sticky buds. Not over. Right, the little ball on the end is statically charged, right? and there's all different strengths. So if you've got a sheet of brass etching, or tiny, tiny parts, try and pick them up with a pair of tweezers, we've all been there, pick it up, bing, gone, you've lost it. Right. And you can't turn it. These, you can pick up anything small and you can twist it, turn it and oh. place it and it won't ping off anywhere. Absolute <laughs> godsend for doing small parts. What took them so long? Yeah, what took them so long, yeah. Uh, these are all the finishing cloths, polishing cloths. Uh, you've got Abra files, glue dispensers, uh, micro finishing pads, very useful for polishing uh, paint up to very fine. And then these, I think, the modelling files, there's flats, rounds and squares, again, for doing small corners, very, very useful. Again, different files, flexi pads, which you can bend to shape for going around mm. corners. Yeah. And again, these little square files, all different grades, mini sanding sticks, different size squares for doing square windows. All right. Absolutely wonderful. And again, washable, clean them all off. Okay. Far side over there is now we're over behind the counters now so if you go over to the board behind you shaft or a propeller from over there one of the red ones you call that number and they're all over there in the drawers so the highly intelligent highly trained people who work here know immediately where everything goes <laughs> uh, middle section on the board is all the speed controllers 
servos, lamps, and it goes in sections. You've then got shaft props, sound generators. On the top, we've got all the resorted radio gear, and then we've got the plastic kit section, which goes along there and around there. And these are all the marine plastic kits, which are suitable for radio control. And we do the miniature radio gear that will go in the boats almost. Ah, I saw a poster of that over there. That's right, yeah, ultra miniature micro gear and miniature gear. What, what manufacturer oh, kits have you got over here? Everything. We've got Trumpeter, Zastavar, uh, Glencoe, Amarang, Revel, Airfix, uh, uh, and a lot of the ones that uh, are rare old kits that we've got rerun. Something like the old Troll kit, lifeboats and such like that. And they're very rare indeed. We've got them rerun. Um, Go gear, you've got things, display boards, you've got all the different working lights, which you can see in miniature form. Again, these are just samples. Again, all useful things. Other thing we've got is things like radars. Hey, mate, be quiet. A quiet one. Yeah, very. <laughs> yeah, don't have a noisy radar, you can hear them coming. <laughs> no. The section over there on the boards in the green boxes is all the standard brass propellers from Reboche. No. You're joking. No, that's just the standard ones. That's just two types, 146 and 162. Right. There's actually 38 different types of propeller, uh, and if you add them all together, there's 1,890 different propellers available. And then there's propeller shafts and couplings and rudders to go with it as well, on top of the range we had before. Uh, middle section is bow thrusters, and then there's the miniature gear sets for motorising the big plastic kits like the Missouri and Arizona. So they come as a box with everything in it to radio control the kit. And we also do, the, they all take standard radio kit. What are the little micro boats at the top? The micro boats are the old mini Z boats, which used to come as a complete thing, miniature Formula One racing boats. Um, they're now not available anymore because yeah. they used to come with two points, uh, 27 meg radio gear. Uh, the firm that make them, we suggested that what they could do better nowadays if they put uh, LiPo batteries brushless motors and 2.4 gig radio gear in them and they said they're not prepared to do that <laughs> because they don't think it would work so we've done it <laughs> so what we've done is we've brought the whole stock of all the mini z boats so what you get there is the boat the outboard the rudder where it's fitted the, the battery box the motor mount so you just buy the boat with all the parts then you can add your own motor and mini z radio gear and lipo batteries and as you the third of the original boat, they're a lot, lot faster and a lot more manoeuvrable. Uh, but once they're gone, they're gone. They won't okay. be anymore because they won't run them again. Yeah. Then we have the catalogue section down there, which is all the different catalogues we do. Uh, again, boats, kits, radio gear, uh, fittings, glue, modelling materials, and modelling adhesives with an instruction book on all the different glues and things we do. Right, now to test your knowledge, are you going to name any of these holes up here? Right. These moulds for they're large moulds that we don't run very often okay. because of the size, shipping problems and all the rest. Name three. Name three, starting with the one next to the tank there, these HMS Illustrious. Long, same in weight, one and a qu uh, quarter of a tonne. The one next to it, because they're all upside down, their moulds is King George V. The one next to that is the G3, the battle cruiser. The one next to that is the Celestine, the Robo Ferry. The one after that, the blue one, is actually the whole mould for Asian Sensor. And then the one next to that is the Sovremeni, the Russian destroyer at 96 scale. Okay, <laughs> that'll do me. <laughs> Good fun. The other thing we do is, the other thing we do is up there on the brown balls, which is all the micro rods uh, and all the different ultra thin plastic strips underneath there's all the injection moulded miniature plastic metals letters from two millimetre up to six Ah, they're three D letters aren't they're they? Three D letters are actually a three dimensional letter. Uh -huh. Again very useful for putting name plates on things where you want it raised. We also stock all the humble paints. Oh yeah. Uh, model paints by White Ensign model, which are the authentic colours. Obviously, all the Dean's Marine kits. <laughs> we don't have them all here. They're on the other side of that wall in the big warehouse. 
We can bring in anything you want to, you want to buy. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, I think that's good. Just um, show me about the hospital ship. Uh, that's our latest boat. Just be released. Fiberglass hull. Um, the whole kit is laser cut. Every single part of it is cut out on lasers. Uh, the doors are engraved with lasers as well. Uh, so it actually looks a hideously complicated model if in the conventional kit sense, but in this form it's actually a very simple model because the most difficult bits, and I'll just show you a sample. For the ship's boat, for instance, the hull is vac formed and you would normally then have to cut the plastic out and put the bottom in and add the detail. Now it's very nice doing one, but when you've got to do 16 of them, it could be a little boring. But with laser cutting, one of the advantages you get from that is you have a sheet of half mil plastic and the bottom boards are cut out and if you can see them in the light, they're engraved with all the planking. The seats are the same, they just pop out and pop them out like that and there you go and you've got the inside. Put the bottom in, put the top in, bit of detail done. All the doors, again, are cut out with a laser. But if you can see, they're engraved with the hinges and the handles and all the small detail. Again, paint them, done, put them in place. So that as a conventional kit where you cut the plastic out would be virtually impossible for the average model of the build. In this form, all laser cut, quite easy. What's the, what's the other all length of it? Uh, 54 inches, I believe. Uh, the ship's boat hulls and the funnel are vac formed fiberglass hole with all the detail in it. It's a nice and strong there. Very strong. And the other nice one, my one of my latest ones, one of my favourite for cuteness, is the little 25 foot motor goat. Again, fiberglass hole with all the planking detail. Clinker built hull, as per the original. Again, all the top parts are laser cut. Just the uh, to cut the windows out in one and a half mil high impact styrene would make it quite tough. Getting too identical, this is where lasers come into their own. You can cut windows out, you can cut grills and gratings in the back, uh, you can cut curves, you can engrave detail. Uh, uh, and this is so big a part, the parts actually clip together. Difficulty build level? Very, very easy indeed. And full of cuteness. And the other nicest thing about that, I'll put that down there. Uh, because it's a simple boat, we needed something to make it a little bit more interesting, just to add a bit of character to it. So, as you've got a big open cabin, what we've done is I've put an engine in it, <laughs> a dummy engine. And again, with a laser, you can cut this out. It's all lasered out, so you can see, and you can see the prop shaft underneath turning when your engine's running, because the power unit is actually <laughs> hidden in the engine. <laughs> An engine, real engine. With a real engine. And there's enough space in there, under there, for a sound generator. So you can get the donk, donk, donk noise just to add not only sound and looks, but you can also add effects as well. And convertible. And convertible. On the real one, you could actually, different types, they did have a canvas front, so you could change it to different types of the same boat. And incredibly manoeuvrable. <laughs> Very cute little bike. Yeah, that's what's that for business now. I'm, and I'm going to talk to the customers now because they've come in to spend some money, so and take lots of expert advice. Oh, I'm not sure from whom. Uh, uh, <laughs> thanks for your time, Ron. No problem at all.